Um, everything's great, man. Just came from the dentist, and uh, my teeth are, well, they could be whiter, but they're, uh, I don't have any cavities. That's an important thing. And, uh, you know, no mouth cancer yet. So, I'm good. Good news. Good news. Good hygiene is good news, especially when you're on the road. You know, you have a dentist, you know, you have tooth pains on the road. That's the worst thing in the world. Oh, God. That happened to Braun, like when uh, Braun and I played this band today is the day, years and years and years ago. We both were dirt broke, poor, baby showered once a week if we were lucky and we were in arizona somewhere and he had a uh and he had a, he's always had really bad uh teeth problems and he had a you know america there's no insurance on anything and definitely not dental insurance but he had an abscess tooth and we stopped in arizona because it hurt him so much he's like i just can't go on anymore i can't play uh, my head is throbbing and he literally got into the operating room or in the chair and they're about to do this extraction of a tooth and they uh the dentist came in and said what are you doing you can't no you can't take this guy's tooth out it's all infected like you could kill him <laughs> and he had to like we, we had i don't know what they did but they uh they, they couldn't have pulled the tooth out there they were uh they almost antibiotics killed antibiotics Antibi yeah they put him on antibiotics for like a week and then when by the time we got home from that tour then he had to go in and see a, a real dentist and probably pay out the nose for it. So yeah, anyway, yeah. yeah. Keep your uh, floss every day, kids. <laughs> there you go. Um, all right. Big tour coming up in April with a Gorgira, right? Uh, going yeah. right through uh, North America. Uh, two legs from what I remember. Um, what's You've toured with these guys in the past. So what's, what's the difference or what? between the two bands that you've noticed like musically or even you know on stage um well we, yeah we've been friends with gojira the the gojiras for a long long time uh joe jira he's a good friend you know i just think there's some camaraderie with those guys they're just like they're pretty soft-spoken french dudes who play really heavy fucking music and i have I commend them and applaud them on, on all that they have achieved over their uh, career. You know, they're uh, when I first met Joe and well, honestly, when I first met Joe and Mario, he, they didn't really speak English very much. And I remember talking to Joe and I was like, listen, man, if you ever need to know anything in English, please just ask me because I'm not, I'm not like the French who, Oh, you're not saying it right. <laughs> I'm like, I will teach you whatever you want, man. And we, that's how we kind of bonded on the first tour. And we've just always had a really good time with those guys. And, and now they, they're like, speak better English than I do. Um, <laughs> which is, which is incredible. But anyway, uh, no, the, those guys, the difference between, you know, they're a very mechanical band. They are very almost dare I say industrial to a, to a certain point, you know what I mean? Um, Meaning, like, comp compared to Mastodon, I feel like we're a little more organic, uh, free-spirited type of band. You know, we definitely have our mechanical moments, but uh, I think we've both influenced each other's writing and playing and and just kind of, like, the things we do as, as a band on tour and, uh, you know, video-wise and, and the actual essence of the show and visual wise just looking at like what's going on i mean um yeah i just you know sometimes when i'm writing i'm like oh that kind of sounds like a gojira riff that's fucking sick like the last riff in pain with an anchor i was like this is very gojira it's very it's very robotic it's very machine like very percussive and it's i was like this is cool i like this and, and i know that gojira would approve um but, you know, a lot of times I look at their, what you know, I've seen them play a million times, even when we're not on tour. Mm -hmm. And I've just been like, wow, these guys, like they, they pour everything into their stage show. And I remember talking to Joe like early on and I'm like, how do you afford to be married with two kids, own a recording studio and live in New York City and, you know, be an immigrant and play in your band because i know how much our band makes and i wouldn't be able to afford all those things like how do you fucking do it and he's like i, I don't like, and i know that you pour all your money into the stage show and the flash pots and the fire and the you know the coordination of of everything that's happening so i know basically that they 
they pour their heart and soul into all that stuff. Yeah. So it's a, it's a great package, right? It, it's a great package between you two guys on this tour. I, so. Yeah. I feel like we're family. You know what I mean? I just feel like we're, we're very, we're brethren. We're just like, we're, we're almost cut from the same cloth. You know, we're all, I'm from a small town in upstate New York and it's just like, they're from a small town in France. And now we're, you know, now we're out there touring the world together or touring, you know, North America, hopefully the world, hopefully we'll do some more touring with this package is great. I love it. Yeah. I'll do it all yeah. day long. Your latest album. I can't even believe it's 2021. Hushed and grim. Can you believe that? 2021. It's <laughs> 2023 it's, now. Yeah. 2023 <laughs> now. All right. So, okay. You have your double album. Whoops. The other way around. Um, how much of that is there Pink Floyd and like Rush injected into it from, from a, from a, from a musical riff guy? You know, it's all peppered in there, honestly. Um, you know, the Pink Floyd, I've always liked, I've always loved, you know, uh, classic rock. I mean, I'm 52 this year, so I grew up on Zeppelin, the Beatles, Pink Floyd, King Crimson, especially Rush. Rush was definitely one of the early, one of the bands that I could actually play some of their riffs when I first got a guitar at 15 years old. So, you know, 1986, I was like, oh, cool. What's this band Rush all about? And Alex Lifeson was kind of like my first guitar hero. I was like, this guy's really cool. I like his, I couldn't play his solos, but I liked the songwriting, you know, and just the fact that they, they didn't do stuff the same every single time if you listen to any of their songs it's like oh the, here comes that here comes the chorus again are they going to change instead of three they do five or they do four and a half or something weird why'd they do that oh i don't know just to be proggy i guess i guess that's what it was so once in a while we like to uh throw something like that in the mix and just get a little i mean we're not masters of it like like rush are but all that like psychedelics, uh, you know, we like we, we definitely did our share of LSD and pot and whatnot in, in our days. So like we know what people going to a concert are trying to experience. You know, they're uh, they might be on some drugs. They might be uh, just wanting to have a good time and hear some crazy weird key- keyboards and delays and uh, guitar solos and have some cool lights and video and we're always trying to make our show better as well. You know, like I said, we kind of learned from Gojira, those guys, you know, that you expect to see something really wild when you go to one of our shows now, it's like, you know, this is, uh, yeah, step it up. So have you met, have you met the guys in rush? I've never met them. No, I never even got to see rush. That's the really that, wow. I'm very bummed about that. Yeah, I never got to see them. Like every time they'd come through Atlanta, we were on tour. Remember, they came through here before, obviously, before Neil died. It's like, oh, Rush is coming. I'm like, fuck, we're going to be on tour then. <laughs> it was one of their last tours. So, yeah. As a Canadian, you know, Rush is sort of, if you haven't seen Rush in concert, then, you know, it's it's just. Lost There's something out. wrong with you from <laughs> as a Canadian well, in Canada. That is in Canada. Maybe. Yeah. It's part of your heritage. Um, part of our heritage. Yeah. You know, Danny Carey, he's been, he did a couple guest appearances with those guys. And, uh, you know, speaking of rush, I, you know, a couple years ago, I did a, uh, I kind of orchestrated with the guys in the two minutes to late or two minutes to two minutes to late night. Yeah. We did the rush cover. Um, and, uh, we did the, like the, the COVID, uh, videos things, you know, and that was really, really fun. And when they were saying, you know, when I said, let's do a rush cover and they're like, okay, yeah, let's, um, let's do that. Uh, and I was like, well, wait a minute, who's going to play the drums first of all, and who's going to play the bass? Cause it's gotta be like really, really good players. And then I just automatically thought like. Well, Danny Carey would be the best drummer I could imagine to play that. I'm like, and I know Danny, I could call Danny. And then I was like, you know what? Les Claypool would be my first pick at a bass player. And I know Les too. I don't know if he'll do it, but I'll just tell him Danny's doing it and tell Danny Les is doing it. And then we're going to do it. That's kind of how it worked out. 
and man was that came out really really cool way better than i thought you know i'm not really a solo guitar player but i i pulled off a decent solo in that song i felt like and it was fun cool cool I what have you learned the right way absolutely absolutely i mean they're a type of band if you don't do it the right way knives out right um yeah what have you learned okay it's been 2019 since your last album is this do you guys write on the road do you think of stuff on the road for the next i mean it's been two years now so i kind of would think things are percolating in the brain right and always some, are, are, yeah are, there's are no you, there's no like shut off valve for writing and, and riff writing and stuff like that it just is always happening and you know i'm, I'm always writing i'm always I'm always, uh, you know, 75% of my day, I'm usually playing guitar and I'm always writing stuff. I've got lots of ideas. Uh, we're actually think we're trying to be ambitious enough to write a song before we leave for this next Gojira tour and have it come out at some point, you know, during the tour, before the tour, in between the two legs, who knows? So. All right. Yeah. And, 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 do you, I mean, I would think that now's the time you're going to start thinking about, okay, after the tour, we're going to write a new album. I, 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 is that sort of in, in the works? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm always assembling riffs. I've got a few skeleton ideas, but it's, you know, it's, it's been tough. We've just been, even, even though we've had this time, this downtime, I've still been busy doing other things. You know, life doesn't revolve around, mastodon for me it's like I've got two kids and a wife that i you know need to be there for and my two dogs <laughs> there's a lot of stuff going on but you know i'm definitely eager and really ready to get started writing the next record and uh you know i don't i don't there's no shortage of riffage or ideas or anything you know we're uh we still get a lot of creativity left in our band and as you know as four different individual guys and we're all 100 percent committed to our band so you know as soon as we get home from this touring cycle which you know we'll uh, probably write a few ideas on the road and you know i'm will i'm ready to show the guys some of the stuff i got and get a jump start so when we get home from the tour it's like all right we got we got some ideas and uh you know, I own a recording studio and that's where we did our last record. So it was, it's real easy just to book some time there and, and just go down. And when we feel be, like being creative, we can. And, uh, you know, it's, a, it's just different now that we have our own or our hands on our own studio, you know, instead of having to book time and then you're on a schedule and it's like, you're always looking at the clock. I feel like now we're just, we can be more creative and take our time. Like we did with the last record. Did you when you toured with Ghost, which was a big, you know, it's a big deal. You know, Ghost, they're really big this, right now, especially in the metal world. Did you find maybe they're rubbing off on you in terms of more simplistic, straightforward songs? Or because bands influence, influence each other, like you said before, like Gorgira is, you know, there's, 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 you know, every, if you hang around with someone long enough, you're bound to be influenced in some way or another. Do you think they may have rubbed off? For the next album, <laughs> eh, I don't know. Maybe some. Or maybe the other way around. <laughs> maybe, you know. I mean, watching them, you know, it's it's they they're they're doing their thing and they do it really well. And to me, listening to when I listen to the music, I'm like, wow, this is almost like pop metal. It's like a lot of the stuff sounds like things I've already heard in the past, but done in the, done now. And re, you know, it's a lot of it. I mean, I'm not saying this as a diss, but it does a little bit of it sounds like rehashed, like other stuff, but done, done in their own way. And it's, and it's very cool. And it's mm. uh, again, you know, I've, I did, I would watch them and see, try to take notes of like, how can we become a bigger band? How can we, what are they doing that we're not? How can we be more engaged with the crowd? You know, they do different things backstage. They have different merchandise options. Um, they have a different pedigree for touring and, you know, they want to be the biggest band in the world and they, 
they're not afraid to tour not eight months out of the year or whatever it is. You know, I, I, I try to take all that stuff into consideration. I mean, I'm only one of four guys in, in our business, in our band, you know, so it's not like I make all the decisions, but I definitely make notes of all these things and bring it up like, Hey, well, you know, ghost does this and Gojira does that. <laughs> you know, I know well, we're- what's one thing that you learned from ghost that you said, you know what, we should adopt that business wise or music wise or whatever the case is. Stage makeup. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> we got to start wearing some, you know, we got to get a stick here. We maybe get like, you know, some big stars and some cat whiskers and stuff like that. <laughs> I don't know. Not, you know, the, what they do is, is when, when they first came out, I was like, this is either going to go over really, really well, or it's going to fucking flop and they're not going to be a band in a year. And, the, and they just, they did really, really well. Yeah, yeah. And they still are. So they're doing something right. You know what I mean? And I feel like we've always been doing stuff right, but uh, we've been a band for 23 years now. And it's like, well, what could what can we do better? What can we, you know, what's the next level? There's always stepping stones to get to the next level. You know, I, I never want to just be adamant with where we are and be like, yeah, this is it. This is this is as big as you can get. It's like, no, let's just keep on striving for the next tier. And where would you like to go musically that you haven't gone in the past? Um, I You've covered a lot of ground. You've covered a lot of ground. <laughs> I mean. I don't know. I mean, we've talked about doing like a punk rock album where it's like much quicker, faster, straight to the, you know, just, you know, just straight to the punch kind of really fast, faster music. And, and I don't know. We've talked about doing that. We've talked about rock operas. We've talked about soundscapes. Um, there's still a lot of stuff that we have to explore and there's a lot of places in the planet we haven't been to yet either, you know, and mm -hmm. there's a lot, of, lots, you know, we're not thrown in the towel by any means. We got a lot of uh, stuff on the horizon and things that we need to check off the list. So. All right. Here, here's the last question. What did the Metallica tour, the death magnetic tour mean for Mastodon back in the day? I think it was like 2009. Oh man. That's kind of when I thought, like, wow, we've really made it. We've, <laughs> we, we're touring with Metallica, who are like, you know, were my idols as a 16, 17 year old kid learning to play guitar, buying a, a white explorer and changing my whole sound, you know, just to be like, wow, I, I want to be like this band. These guys are great. They look like normal dudes. They got ripped jeans on, leather jackets. They sing about cool shit. Um, so, you know, going on that tour, I was like, wow, man, this is, this is like, doesn't get any bigger than touring with this band because these guys are like the biggest fucking band in the world. And we went to South America. Uh, we went to a bunch of shows in Europe with them. Uh, it was just a lot of fun. And it was, uh, you know, it was, I just kind of realized like, man, we need to step it up because when we got out there, we were still a pretty small band and we didn't have a huge budget to be out there. And, and they kind of threw us on right as doors were opening every night in these massive arenas, which sometimes we're playing in front of just people. You know, most, most nights are just playing for trickling in people who are just like, oh, what's going on? Not really much of a sound check. Uh, I don't think we had a proper monitor person on that tour or we had fired somebody or somebody fell through and I think we were just trying out in-ear monitors and we were, we were in the round, the big circular stage, which we had no idea what to do. Like, what the fuck do we do with this? <laughs> it's a big round stage. We're used to facing one way. And every night before the, uh, every night we'd get out there on the stage, we weren't, we didn't know which, where people were going to sit. So we did, we set up facing one direction and just hope that everybody sat in front of us to watch us. So it was, uh, there was a lot of learning curves thrown at us for that tour you know what i mean and we're much more equipped nowadays to go back out on tour with metallica so that would be cool <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know you don't really think of these things on a being on a round sort of stage right like where are you gonna look who are you gonna look at i mean and how do you run around it well you know people are going they're going to their assigned seats so they could there's people behind us there's people to the sides of us so we had to start you know we had a 
a group huddle. We're like, okay, Bill, you run that way during this song. Brent, you run that way during that song. Troy's like, I can't run anywhere. I have to sing right here. I, there's only one, you know. So I'm running around in circles like an idiot. And Brent's running the other way. And we probably ran into each other once or twice on the other side. But we just uh, we just did the best we could and just tried to have a good time, which which was great. I was in, I was in heaven because I'm like, hey, we're, we're all over South America with my favorite band in the world, Metallica. So this is this is killer. I'm, I'm not complaining at all. Whatever. We got, we play half an hour and we're done. Yeah, yeah. Here's the last question, actually. How do you guys keep it together? Like, there's so many bands. There's so much drama. There's What's the secret to keeping the band together all these years, you know, intact? And it, and from the outside, it looks like you guys get along musically and personally. Uh, what's the secret sauce? A lot of bands, you know, I interview bands all the time, and I got to tell you, the drama, you know, this guy suing that guy, and uh, break, you know. Yeah. Well, we've been really fortunate. I mean, when we first started this band, it was my idea because we we started the band, and then we had to get like lawyers and you know, create an LLC, create a business. And my, I remember the lawyer asking me like, what's shared goes to everybody. Like, how do you, how are you going to split up all your profits in this business? Cause now it's become a business because the band was big enough where you have to have a, an entity, you have to have a name, you have to have mm -hmm. the tax ID number, all this crap. And I said, I said, you know, divide everything equally because if, even if, Brent was writing all the songs, even if I were writing all the songs or Braun was writing our, all the songs or Troy was writing all the songs. It's different. Almost every album, there's different people are doing different things. And it, to me, it was like in the early days, Troy didn't write a lot of the songs, but he did other things. You know what I mean? Like he, everybody always takes it down to like, well, this, this guy writes all the music. So like, like, for instance, like Weezer or something like that's usually probably 99% Rivers Cuomo. Like it's his band. Smashing Pumpkins. Smashing Pumpkins. And like, I didn't want to be a band like that because once, once you start saying, well, if I write more songs, I get more money. Then the band starts turning this evil direction that I don't, I didn't want to see that coming. I didn't want to fight about that kind of stuff. I was like, Look, man, maybe this record, like, so-and-so didn't write that much, but he fucking drove the van, like, every fucking night. Or he and stands in the middle. And define what writing is. Is a drum beat uh, writing a song? And that could yeah, turn the song into something else, right? Is writing the lyrics or versus writing the music. And, like, I didn't, I just didn't want to fight over that shit. So usually if you look at all the credits on all our records, it always says written, but written to produce by Mastodon. It doesn't say like, Oh, Bill wrote this one. And Troy wrote that one. And it's just, we don't, it's not an ego thing. You have to keep the egos out of it because, you know, once you get to that point where you, you know, well, you're going to get paid more if you write and you sing, okay, well then I'm going to write more and sing. And then, then it's, you're just writing and singing for the sake of the money. And it's not about the money. You know, I'm not in a band to, to make money. I'm, I mean, the money, when I started the band, I was like, this is just fun. We weren't, we didn't make any money for the first six, seven years. You know, I was like, I just enjoy jumping in a van and playing loud guitar in all these little clubs and bars all over the country. And this is really fun. I get to travel and do all this neat stuff. And, you know, the thing is money always complicates everything. So when the band starts getting bigger and there's bonuses, you know, like signing bonus or whatever, and everything's, you know, split evenly between everyone. And I think that's a big part of it. Uh, we've kept the same four guys and, you know, we're not without our drama and our problems, but we try to keep that stuff like to ourselves, you know, it's more personal and uh, it's not really for public consumption. Like that, I don't want to be looked at like that. You know what I mean? I just, we're, we're just four normal guys that, uh, you know, write music together and, tour and hopefully we can just keep that image you know we we do get along and we haven't we're all we all have the eye on the prize which is doing what we love for a living and being able to maintain that all right on that note well said um the last their latest album hushed and grim you could still pick it up it's out there waiting for the next album and of course the tour starts 
in Portland on April 18th in the U.S. and rolling into Canada as well on a second leg, I believe. Yeah, all the way to September. Jeez, that's a that's, a, that's extensive. Well, congratulations. Yeah it's, really, yeah, it's really only three and a half weeks each to, each leg, so it's not that much. But I would okay, prefer I guess to do more. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's going April, May, and then yes, you're right. Then there's a break, and then it starts into August again to September. But, yeah, but it's going to be awesome. I'm really looking forward to it. And I wish we had more dates in Canada, but uh, we'll, we'll we'll take what we can. And uh, it's great talking to you. Thanks for the interview.